Hey everyone, thank you for voting in my poll to help me decide for which tutorial I should do next. You all chose this jack-o'-lantern here. In the next section, I'm gonna go over the supplies I plan on using and give you more information about uh, if you substitute what I think might work. In the comments down below, I will put a lot of links to things like the reference I used, Canva template for the grid that I use, if you would like to use that, and also little doodads like this that I use a lot in my art practice. So with that said, let's get going. Let's start with the paper. This is Hanson XL watercolor paper, uh, 140 pounds. It's nice and thick, stays flat, these tear out easily. You could use a watercolor block if you wanted, well, but I have not found it necessary. So this is what I use. Feel free to substitute your preferred paper. Now, the way I put my sketch onto the paper is using some colored pencils. In the red version, I've got Prismacolor Poppy Red and Luminance uh, Burnt, Burnt Sienna? I'm trying to read it. Yeah, it looks like Burnt Sienna. So I use those two. In the blue version, I am just using a luminance uh, phthalo cyanine blue. That really matches the blue tint that I used. Um, you could use graphite. You could use charcoal. I've used both and been very happy with the results. So use what you've got. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy special colors. But that takes us to the tints. I have used three. For the blue, I've used fluorescent blue. I've been using this all year as an underpainting for uh, pastel studies and pieces and been very happy with it. It's not what I would call fluorescent, but that's the name of it. And then I've got two more. I've got transparent red oxide and nickel azo yellow. The reason I'm using these two together is because it is kind of a replacement for the nickel azo gold that is no longer available. Now, the big thing about these and the way that I'm using it is that you need to make sure that you use transparent um, colors. Like you can see these little swatches on top of the black bars show you how transparent they are. Not all the colors in the golden high flow acrylic line are transparent. So if you're going to do a sketch and then tint on top of it, you need to make sure they're transparent. If you're not doing the sketch, well then that frees you up to use any color you want. Let's talk about the texture. I am using Liquitex Clear Gesso. It has just a little bit of tooth to it and it is rather transparent. There are other options. Again, they're gonna change the look a little bit and they're also gonna change, you know, can you see under it? So depending on if you do that sketch first, this is what I recommend. But if you don't wanna do the sketch first, then that opens you up to things like fine pumice gel and pastel ground. They are a little less transparent and they're thicker. With I like this one because straight out of the bottle, I can squirt it onto my page and brush it on. This is the brush I use. It is a two and a half inch hake brush. Um, I find that works well. So any wide soft brush to help you move the, whatever medium you use, help you move that around. One last piece of, it's not really supplies like this, but a tool that I use is this proportional divider. It's a golden ratio divider. And I will use that to put my grid on my paper. There you go. There are the supplies I'm gonna be using. Hopefully I've given you enough information to make informed decisions on what supplies you want to use. If you have any questions about anything, leave me a comment below. I will get back to you with an answer. And if I don't know, I'll see if I can find out or we can find it together. And while you're waiting for the next segment, I have a video where I compare pastel ground. I create this grid, a clear gesso, pastel ground, and fine pumice gel. If you'd like to see how those three compare, check out the video and I'll see you next week.